if you're a creative freelancer or you're considering becoming a creative freelancer, you should probably realize that you are gonna spend a lot of your time on your own. And if you are a creative, you might tend towards introversion like myself and you might think, time to myself, perfect. What could be better? And I thought the same when I quit my job and started working for myself two and a half years ago but it actually can be a little bit more difficult than you think. Working and being on your own for long periods of time can definitely lead to feelings of isolation and loneliness. And I think everything that's happened over the last 18 months has only compounded that further. So I think it's really important that as creative freelancers or potential creative freelancers that we properly look after ourselves. And what I'm doing in this video is presenting my top eight tips for things you can do on a regular or semi-regular basis that will leave you feeling in a better place and able to combat any of those isolation and loneliness feelings. And I do think they are really important and it is also important to stress that when we work for ourselves, we often think about everything we're working on in a time versus money aspect. And as a freelancer in this way, we are often charged for our time. Time is our commodity. So we're often putting client work before anything else. I want us to flip that. I think we need to be doing these things that I'm gonna list before we think about doing our client work, which is kind of an interesting way around because we're not getting paid for them. But I do believe that doing these things on a regular or semi-regular basis leave us in such a better place that we are then more productive and more efficient when working on our client work. So let's see what they are. Now the first thing, and I think this is probably the most important thing, is exercise. I have committed over 2021 to try and exercise on almost a daily basis. The only days where I don't really do any tend to be the weekends. So I tend to go to the gym, I go running, I go cycling. And the changes to how I felt have been, honestly, they've been enormous. Exercise is one of those things that is quite polarizing. The people that do exercise often go on about how great it is, whereas the people that don't do it are really put off by it. I promise you, if you commit to doing, I don't know, half a dozen exercise sessions, that will change how you feel about it. No one's ever regretted doing exercise, unless you get injured, which is what happened to me at the gym earlier today whilst filming this, uh, meaning I couldn't do my fancy B-roll running segment. But yeah, generally we always feel better after exercise. We're fitter, we're healthier, and it kind of fires up your brain more. If you're feeling unproductive, you go out for a run, you come back, you are in a better place to work that afternoon. The second one is something that's been talked about a lot over the last few years, and it's something I've done for four or five years, and that is daily journaling, or almost daily journaling. I don't, I don't think I do any of these things every day. Um, but it is important, and I'll tell you why. We've always got thoughts going around in our head and it is really hard sometimes to unpack those thoughts and feelings because of everything else we've got to concentrate on, particularly if we're sort of running our own business. Doing this for 15 minutes every morning or evening and just, just getting your thoughts down on paper lets you process how you're thinking so much better than, than just trying to think it out. It really seems to, I don't know what it is, it really seems to unlock something, just that getting in the flow of writing everything down and it can really help us to solve the problems like why am I feeling like this, what's causing it and then once that's out and down on paper your mind's kind of free to focus on other things and just get on with the rest of your day. So this is something I found so useful. I never tend to read anything back, it is just a case of getting everything down on paper and just, just writing about where I'm at on that particular day. The third is as cliche as the last and it is meditation. Now I've meditated semi-regularly for a few years now and I know the benefits it can bring. The problem I've had with it is that I just haven't turned it into a habit and it's something that I think you need to do quite like really regularly to be able to notice all the benefits. Just doing it every so often won't work in the way that you want it to. So it is something I'm committing to doing more of over the next few weeks and months because like I say, I know where it leaves me mentally. I find it very calming and it really helps you to be present as well, which I think is really important. I use the Calm app. Uh, you don't even need to use an app. You can just sit there doing breathing and focusing on your breathing for five, 10 minutes. But I do think if you are a beginner, an app is the best way to start. The fourth thing is something that probably sounds incredibly boring and it's something I actually really dislike doing and it is food planning. 
planning all of my meals for the week on a Sunday night. It is so tedious, I hate doing it, but it is so beneficial because I don't need to think about it again until the next Sunday. As freelancers, we make so many decisions during the day that by the time it comes to the end of the day, I've got decision fatigue and someone asks what I want for tea and I just can't think of anything. And I think that's when we end up reaching for our phones and ordering a delivery or just going to the supermarket and buying a pizza because it's easy. If everything is planned in advance, you're gonna get better nutrition, you're probably gonna save money as well, and you're gonna remove that decision fatigue. Now the fifth thing is keeping in touch with others. When I started working for myself, I knew I had to go and network and build up a network of contacts, and that's something I found really difficult, but I did it, and it's been so beneficial because I have now got people that I can lean on for different things. I speak to, to what I'd say colleagues, people that do the same job as me. I speak to clients, some of my clients I consider friends now. So I'm chatting to people on, on almost a daily basis and now that things have opened up again, I'm, I'm meeting people for coffees and stuff and having that available, being able to vent when it's necessary, being able to problem solve when it's necessary is, is really important. If you're just being incredibly insular and isolating yourself, I think that is gonna really cause some long-term problems. So as hard as it might be, try and network, try and build up those contacts, and then you never know when you might wanna rely on them. Number six is one of the main reasons I went into working for myself, and that is working at a time that suits you. A lot of people are fully aware of when they work best in the day, but some people just aren't and haven't really thought about it. So I'd urge you to have a think about when you work best. And if you are working for yourself, try and work at those times. I work best in the morning, and in the evening. In the afternoon, I'm pretty much useless. I'm working a nine to five for someone else. That doesn't play into it. You, you can't say, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm not really doing much this afternoon because I feel lethargic and my, my brain doesn't work as well in the afternoon. You just, you just can't do that. But on the flip side, I was so used to working a nine to five that when I started working for myself, if I wasn't working between nine and five, I felt guilty. I felt like I was doing something wrong. I felt like I should be working. It takes a little bit of time to get out of that particular mindset, but if you think, right, okay, I'll work best in the mornings and the evenings, do most of your work then. And I think that will leave you feeling a lot more productive and it will also free up different hours of the day when, when you can do things that maybe better suit you. I really struggle to, to work within an office again now, purely because I'm so used to working at times that suit me rather than times that suit the company I work for. And the seventh point is scheduling. Now, this is something, is it scheduling or scheduling? It depends, it depends. don't know, depends where you come from, no idea. Anyway, scheduling is something I have been inherently bad at over the years. I have just tended to do things when I've got them or when I felt like it. And somehow it worked, but I don't think it was that good for me because I'd have very stressful periods and I'd have dips and everything else. And I just don't think it was the best way of working despite feeling like it might have worked for me at the time. So this is something I've started doing recently. I, I look at my week first thing on a Monday, I look at what I've got to do and then maybe look towards the, the following week as well. And I block out all the time in my diary for the tasks that I need to do that week. It stops me getting overwhelmed and it just makes everything a little bit more predictable. Yes, there's gonna be things pop up that you need to deal with there and then completely get that. But I think if you can time block the different things that you need to do during the week, it just helps to remove some of the stress that would come if, if you didn't have a schedule in place. And finally, we'll go back to the cliches and for freelancers, this is a big one. It is coffee. Now, one of the best things I've bought in recent years is a bean to cup coffee machine. I drink a lot of coffee and it's just such a nice thing to have in the house. I'm fairly sure it's saved me money because I don't really buy coffee from shops anymore, but I do spend a fortune on beans. But anyway, it's, it's so nice to step away from the desk from time to time and just make yourself a nice coffee. And I think that plays into something else when it's about rewards. Historically, I've not been very good at congratulating myself and rewarding myself for a job well done. And, and having, a, having something nice at home like that is definitely a reward for your hard work as a freelancer. So if you work for yourself and you've got any tips along the same lines, please put them in the comments below because I think it's always good to share between ourselves as freelancers. And if you like what I've talked about in this video, please consider subscribing because I'm gonna be talking about a lot more stuff 
on these lines. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you next week.